Okay, good afternoon uh, everyone and again welcome to my YouTube channel. This is your Prof. Zeus and for this afternoon we'll, we'll uh, discuss about reversing entries. No? Um, as I mentioned uh, during our first discussion about the accounting cycle, uh, reversing entries are prepared actually um, <clears throat> the first day of the following year. Okay? Now this is actually a what? Uh, an optional uh, step. No? Reversing entry. Hindi siya required. Okay? At ito ay optional. But uh, let me explain to you why uh, companies may want to uh, do this reversing entries no, at the beginning of the following year. Now, uh, reversing entries are actually uh, the, the opposite, the exact opposite of your uh, adjusting entries. Now, recall that in the adjusting entries, medyo marami tayong diniscuss no, ng mga adjusting entries, but not all of them will be reversed. No? So, ano lang ba yung mga nire-reverse natin? Number one, it pertains to accruals, and that is accrued expenses. Okay? And then number two, of course, is accrued revenues. And then number three, we have prepayments, no? Prepayments when the expense method is used. And then number four, you have the deferrals or the uh, advanced collections if the revenue method is used okay so these are the four adjustments that we need to reverse or that should be reversed uh, beginning the following year now let us discuss why we need to reverse these entries okay so first let's take about let's take a look at accrued expenses so sabi natin accrued expenses are already incurred but not yet paid right now what is adjusting entry for accrued expense let us assume that the company owns uh, a bank okay interest of say uh, 10,000 pesos, okay? So, this being a uh, an interest owed to bank, okay, not yet paid, assuming that this will pay the following year, we need to accrue. So, therefore, the adjusting journal entry is what? Debit, interest expense, and then credit your accrued interest, okay? And this is for 10,000 pesos, okay? Now, after adjusting entries, anong ginagawa natin? Di ba? We will close the books of accounts, right? Because after this, you prepare the financial statements and then you close the accounts. So, therefore, in closing the accounts, we will close all the nominal accounts, including what? Including this interest expense, okay? So, using the closing entries, no? We will, cl we will now close the interest expense. So, debit, if you close this, you credit. So, debit, income summary, For 10,000 and credit ka ngayon ng interest expense for 10,000. Okay? So, if you look at your T-account analysis, okay? This is your interest expense and this is your accrued interest. Okay, let's post this. Debit 10,000 then credit 10,000 pesos. Then, credit your 10000 for interest expense. So if you look at the T-account the analysis, okay, interest expense is now zero and accrued interest is 10,000 pesos, right? Now, the following year, you will have to pay, right, the interest. Now, following year, okay. Okay, payment of interest. Now, if no reversing entry uh, is done, okay, so the entry that the correct entry would be what? If no if there is no if no reversing entry. Okay, remember that interest expenses are already closed, which is okay because this pertains to the prior to prior years, no? So therefore, if no reversing entries are made or entry is made, your entry for the payment would be what? Debit accrued expense, right? Because that is the only account that is left. Left open and then credit cash. Now, with this entry, your accrued interest will be zero, okay? So, no problem with that. But what if your bookkeeper or accountant knows that, you know, um, whenever you pay, you debit interest expense? If that is the practice, the known practice of your accountant, then we will have a problem. Why? Because what's happening? We will have a problem because what will happen is what? Sorry, I'm going to blink yung ilaw.
Okay. Now, if that is the case, okay, magkakaroon ng problema because if the entry that, that your accountant will make, okay, when, when you pay this interest is debit to interest expense and credit cash, then we will have a problem for 10,000 pesos. Why? Because the interest expense will be charged the following year, which is not the case because you have already charged it in the previous year and this actually belongs in previous year, right? So, mali na gawin mong debit is interest expense. E paano kung ito ang alam niya na entrada pag ikaw ay nagbabayad, right? Ang gagawin mo, you have to, if this is the case, for, for the accountant or the bookkeeper to be consistent in his entry, no? pag siya ay gumagawa ng, pag, ng, ng payment, no? you need to do the reversing entry. Pag may reversing entry, anong gagawin mo? So, you reverse the adjustment, okay? This is the adjustment, you just reversed it. So, debit, accrued, interest, and credit interest expense. Okay? For 10,000 pesos. Now, if you will do this, look at your T-account. So, accrued interest, 10,000 pesos, right? So, in the debit mo ngayon, si accrued interest for 10,000, so accrued interest will be zero. And then, interest expense will be negative. Oh, eh, di ba sabi natin, expenses are what? A normal debit balance. Sir, paano nagkaroon ng negative? Ibig sabihin, abnormal balance ang uh, interest expense mo. And that is okay. Why? Because it, it's actually preparing this account for the subsequent entry. So, upon payment, kung alam ng accountant mo lang ay mag-debit ng interest expense, pag ikaw ay nagbabayad, okay lang. Debit interest expense, credit cash, 10,000 pesos. Look at your T-account analysis for interest expense. So, debit, debit, 10,000. So, ano nangyari sa interest expense mo? Di ba, close na? Walang interest na na-charge in the subsequent year. because And that is rightfully so because it belongs to the previous year. So, kahit na maging, itong maging entrada niya, okay lang. So, this is the reason why we have to make our reversing entries. No? For us to be consistent in terms of uh, the entries that we make no? the following year. Now, Another one is, sabi nga, oh, revenue sa inyo na yan ha, kayo na mag-ano niyan, mag-experiment niyan. Oh, sabihin natin prepayments. Okay, prepayments. Prepayments when the expense method is used. So, let us assume that A is actually renting, no? Renting uh, an, an office space for 12000 per month. And, nagbayad siya nung December 1, okay, for three months for a total of 26,000 and this one is for the months of December January February okay so yung tatlong yan now as of December 31 okay so this has been used and this is unused okay so gawa natin ang entry so upon payment sabi niya dapat ito ay expense method okay so debit ka ng rent expense for 36,000 and credit ka ng cash for 36,000. Right? Okay. Now, at year end, anong gagawin mo? You have to prepare your adjusting journal entry. Okay? So, anong adjusting journal entry mo? You have to recognize the portion that is unused because you recognize everything as used when in fact only one month was used. Okay? So, therefore, Yung, yung two months ato, we have to recognize this as a prepayment. So, debit ka ng prepaid rent. For how much? That's 24000 And credit ka ng rent expense. For 24000 Okay? And then, after preparing this entry, what happens to your... Uh, T account. Let's take, take a look at the T account analysis of your rent expense and your prepaid rent. Okay, so rent expense has a debit balance of twenty six thousand when you debited that. Now, meron siyang twenty four thousand na balance na, na credit uh, entry, no? And then your prepaid rent is twenty four thousand debit. Okay, so that's how uh, the T account looks after the adjusting journal entry. Now. We will now go to the closing entries. So, closing entries, we will close the rent expense. So, debit ka nang. Okay, how much is the rent expense here? The rent expense has a debit balance of 12,000. Right? Okay, so we will close this. So, debit ka nang. 
uh, rent, uh, sorry, income and expense summary for 12,000 and you credit ka ng rent expense for 12. So rent expense is 12,000 credit. Okay, hold on for a second. Okay, so sorry for the interruption. Okay, so we will now close. No? So nag-close tayo ng ating rent expense. So zero na siya. So what is left is the prepaid rent, right? Okay, now the following year, if you will not do a reversing entry, what will happen is you have a 24,000 peso prepaid rent. What if your accountant uh, fails to remember that, they, they, that you have your prepaid rent okay, for 24,000? So... The, the prepaid rent will not be recognized as rent expense during the period. And that is wrong because you will consume the, 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 the rent no, for, for January and February during that period. Okay? So, anong gagawin natin? Okay? If we prepare a reversing entry, what will happen? Okay, tignan natin. I-reverse natin itong prepayment, itong ating, sorry, itong ating just adjusting entry, no? So, magde-debit ka ng rent expense for 24000 and credit ka ng prepaid rent for twenty four. So, what happens now? Your prepaid rent will now be closed, 24000 and then you will have to recognize or you will recognize 24000 as rent expense, which is rightfully so because this rent expense belongs to, the 24000 belongs to the current current year. Okay? So, yun yung dahilan. Kasi kapag hindi ka nag nagkaroon ng reversing entry, natitira yung prepaid uh, expense mo, prepaid rent mo doon sa, sa libro. At kung hindi ito naalala ng accountant mo, then that will remain as a prepaid expense. Right? Okay. So, pag nag-reversing entry ka, automatic na nag-charge sa expense yung iyong prepayment during the current year. Okay? So, again, sa deferrals kayo na bahalang mag-analyze. No? But just follow the the, um, the the method of analysis that I use no for the accrued expense and for the prepayment okay so that's it for the reversing entry so this is the last step in the accounting cycle so for next session we'll discuss about uh, merchandising business okay thank you guys bye